Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for taking your time to watch my videos. Um, this video marks the beginning of my series on human rights, and to be honest with you, the preparation for this series was rather extensive. Um, there's a lot of information to be covered uh, in a discussion on human rights, and my, my discussion is obviously uh, um, a very introductory discussion, so I needed to find a text that would facilitate an introductory understanding on some of the basic concepts of human rights. Now, in preparing for it, I recognize that uh, my intent at this point is not to do you know, a, a, a series as long as my, my Nietzsche series, which is now currently, I think, 26, 25 or 26 hours long already. Um, I just wanted to present the information, but I recognize that this series, the series on human rights, um, might end up being like the first section of maybe a two or three part series on human rights. Um, I wasn't able to cover um, gender rights, civil rights, some of the basic concepts because those have been pretty much discussed within the literature so I had to go through and select. I needed a good text in order to make that selection and I, I chose this text, um, Human Rights in the World um, Community. So this is a text that I'm using, the actual first video of this series is a link to this book. Uh, it's a powerful book. It's a great book. The edited book is it's well, it's well, uh, well written. It's well structured. It's well organized, and I'm basing the entirety of the series on this book. Um, the good thing about that is that if you're interested in following along, by all means, go ahead, go to Amazon or your local uh, bookstore, get the book, uh, and follow along. Also. Uh, the notes are always available. Just click, for those of you who know me, you know this, this is a standard procedure. <laughs> for those of you who might be watching me for the first time, uh, a banner will pop up, click the banner ad, it'll take you to the PDF. The PDF is actually complete. I, I wrote the lecture in its entirety before beginning the series because it's not like my Nietzsche series that's ongoing and, you know, 100 part. This series uh, is contained and once I get to the end of the document, it will be the end of at least this first section of the series. I might go back maybe a month or two, or maybe even longer, maybe, you know, by the end of this year, beginning of next year, and do, like, um, Human Rights Lecture Part 2, and then do another installment. But uh, as of now, the PDF is up. By all means, uh, go ahead and grab it. It's 25 pages long. Uh, it's probably going to be a pretty lengthy lecture. I'm, I'm thinking minimum six hours. I doubt it'll be as short as six hours, but minimum six hours, probably around 10 to 12 hours, will probably be the length of the lecture. Uh, and with that, I don't really have uh, much else to say, with the exception that uh, the lecture was inspired by a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal young uh, musician, James Blackshaw. I came across his music and phew, I was transfixed. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I ordered his CD, so when his CD comes, I'm going to do an unboxing of his CD because it was like, you got to buy it, you got to support it. But the Human Rights Lecture, <laughs> that has nothing to do with this lecture, but the Human Rights Lecture was inspired by that music. And in order to go through the process of creating these lectures and getting the energy and the motivation to do this, because obviously I don't have to do this, it's not part of my job, I'm doing this for the betterment of humanity, I need to pull energy from various sources. And for this lecture, I pulled a lot from James Blackshaw, so shout out to him. With that, uh, let's begin the Human Rights Lecture. Alright, so this is Human Rights, and this is going to be Section 1, and remember, again, we're using uh, this book, so I'm going to make references to this book, uh, and specifically within um, Human Rights in the World Community, the first section is going to cover pages 17 through 24, so a pretty short uh, amount, short page span, so it's going to cover pages... 17 through 24, and let's begin. All right, so within this, we're looking at um, uh, Bern H. Weston human rights concepts and content, a very general sort of introduction to human rights. What is human rights? What, what are rights? And so on. So I want to go into a bit of discussion on that, and the first part is that of historical development. Um, first point is the notion of human rights is a consequence of its historical development, right? When we talk about human rights, 
um, it's important to, and I'll make a distinction in a second, but when we talk about human rights, it's important to understand that this concept of human rights is something that happens as a consequence of the development of history, right? So, you know, we are within a historical time frame, and out of that comes the notion of human rights. Right? So that there wasn't a conception of human rights before, and then after, obviously, we have uh, more complex accounts of human rights. So that human rights, the notion of human rights, comes out of history, right? It is a product, the, the notion, the concept of human rights, is a product of our historical development. Um, on a philosophical standpoint, and I don't want to get too deep because this is an introductory lecture, this is not to say, however, that human rights as such, the rights, the inalienable rights, if you will, is a product of history, right? Those rights are inalienable, which means that those products stand um, prima facie inextricably bound with an individual's existence. So the notion is a product of history, right? The notion of human rights is a product, right? The notion of human rights is a product. What is not a product is the right itself, right? The right is um, a priori, prima facie, uh, imbued with all individuals who classify attaining the classification human. Something we'll discuss uh, later, right? And this gets more complicated. And this is why I said I might end up doing a multi-part series, right? I really think with a, with a human rights, because it affects the globe, right? This is, all the lectures that I do are global lectures. But I think more than any, this lecture affects um, the vast majority of people, right? We want to discuss and we want to be able to understand what we mean by our human rights, what they are, and how do we have those rights recognized and legitimized. All right, so contemporarily, in a contemporary fashion, I'm going to change the marker here. Contemporarily, when we discuss human rights, um, we recognize uh, a number of things, right? It is the product of, and this is not entirely or exclusively, but this idea of human rights is a product um, of the following. The founding of the United Um, it's a product of the founding of the United Nations in 45, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights on December 12, uh, December 10th, 1948, right? So on 12, oh, my markers are already dead. I need to get a new start. On 12-10-48, right? December 10th, 1948, we have the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I actually have a, 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 a copy, it's a very small, because I mean, it's like a little pamphlet in my, uh, in, my, in my briefcase, right? So we have the Universal Emphasis Declaration of Human Rights. Right. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Um, so just sort of historical background information. Um, number two, so that's the first point. Uh, second point in this contemporary assessment, the notion of human rights originated in the articulation, and this is where we're going to get into uh, 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 a bit of, a bit more complex discourse, the law of nations, right? Um, the, the law of nations, which were certain universal rights that extended beyond the rights of citizens, right? And I'll read this again, right? the law of nations, which were certain universal rights that extended beyond the rights of citizens, right? And this is just gentle, right? So this idea of the law of nations, if we think about it, um, if we're going to try and conceptualize historically how human rights developed, well, there obviously must have been events that preceded the development of human rights, and how did those preceding developments affect the notion of human rights? Well, the first thing is the law, and I'll write this down, the law of nations, right? the law of nations, which were 